Kickboxing versus a knife. How much do I need to know so I can do what I know? To answer that question, I brought in Aaron Gennetti of Knife Control Concepts. So we just got done doing a five hour part one knife control concept seminar. And the whole time in my head, I'm thinking, I don't wanna do any of this. I don't wanna hold on to a man. I don't wanna to go to the ground with a man. I'm a punchy kicky guy. So what do I need to do to keep doing that, but in the context of defending myself from a knife? Yeah, uh, I agree with you. I don't wanna hold on to a guy with a knife either. Uh, the way we approach it with the, the knife control concepts is we're just solving the entanglement because it's the hardest part. However, to your point, if you're a good striker, we wanna take care of striking, you wanna be able to utilize that. I break it down into three concepts and concepts from the perspective of how do I take a kickboxer or somebody with a good striking background and then take what they know, transfer it into, okay, well now there's a knife in the hand versus, well, let me change the way you fight even in a little bit, right? So what we wanna look at, the way I would boil this down is what are the assets and liabilities of my basic movement and timing on striking compared to what I would normally do with boxing? right, or kickboxing, whatever that realm is. So if we start looking at that, it's like, okay, first and foremost, if I wanna implement striking, where you might throw a strike and I might lean back out of the way and then try to fill space with the strike as you go to recoil, that's still legitimate. That still works, I've been based on range that way. Maybe if you throw that stab and I see that kind of coming and I get out to the outside, I might have opportunities to strike and to move that way. I might be able to use my longer range striking, right, against the blade, so you go to stab and I fill that space with a foot. All of those things are legitimate. The concerns come with understanding the liabilities of, okay, well now there's a knife involved, I don't need a ton of power with it. So I, I don't necessarily discourage people from learning how to strike. In fact, we do this in our, our second level, our KCC2 program, but I wanna understand where things can go wrong. If you're gonna throw that and I'm gonna be moving to the outside, like stepping, moving to the outside that way, I need to know that once I make whatever my strike is, so we go here, I step and move my way out, let's say I'm gonna go to the head, well once I go to here, I'm not as, or uh, it's not that big of a deal in boxing or in kickboxing in the time he needs to go to square up. But here, if he just takes a knife and wings it back, that's problematic. So my in and out, my range of getting in, making a strike and getting the hell back out, significantly higher with a blade. So you make that, I kind of like take my way, step out, boom, and I'm back out. If I'm not gonna grapple, I need to know my distance and my range, makes sense? So put the knife in the hand, change the context of the situation, and you will learn what stuff in kickboxing works against a knife and what stuff doesn't work very quickly in a very simple way. Piece number two that I would say is blocking. Now we start getting into defensive stuff. If we're not talking about a blade, right, I can usually keep a pretty close cover, right? I could go into like just a basic high covers or helmet type thing and handle some of that stuff. The second a blade's involved, that becomes a huge problem, right? I don't wanna be stuck and actually have my arms stuck to my freaking head in this case. So now my defenses start getting into like very aggressive parries. If there's a harsher angle on where the blade's coming from, then it's very aggressive, like arm stops is the way that we refer to it. But it's just any type of a basic check block that you're gonna get from a lot of places. But rarely am I going to like long guard stop block, right? I'm not just gonna leave an arm out here. I like to treat mine like striking. So as it comes in, I make whatever that movement is, I hit and return. Because if I'm going to be a striker, and I'm gonna solve this through a striking equation, I'm gonna give a music analogy because I come from a music background, but if I'm always working on the downbeat, so let's say you find a rhythm with the stab, boom, 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 boom. If I match your rhythm, keep You're it never going. gonna get it. If I match your rhythm, block, punch, I'm missing those pieces. So by learning to quick block return, I am more likely to be able to fill what I would refer to as the half feet, right, in those cases. So now it's block, pow, pow, where I'm filling that space in. I may not want to wrestle, Right? I may not want to commit to any type of a two-on-one outside position. However, using clinch concepts for moments in time can be beneficial for me. It's clinch, not wrestling. That's so clinch. I can do it. Yeah, <laughs> you're allowed to clinch because you're a striker, right? So, okay, maybe off of my block, like I create a frame and a structure, but all this is now is what? It's like hand clearing to be able to get that in. Well, whether you like it or not, it's grappling. That's what it is, yeah. yeah. It's wrestling, it's clinch work, it's all that type of stuff. Not clinch work in regard to like I'm We're giving here. up here and fighting this. Clinch work in regard to well, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's like, I, I understand like I'm filling space, right? And then what do I want to get done? Well, maybe I just flank the angle, shove them off and make my punch there. I can maybe do my shoulder check to create space and fill, you know, or maybe I'm doing my step pivot to the outside 
and fill in that spot there, but I need to know how to pass arms, trap arms, move things off to the side. All things you can take from clinch training, right? And then if you plug all of that into that half beat analogy, even in here with the knife in the hand and I'm doing all this type of stuff, I can't go step pivot and then wait for you to square up. I've got to, whatever I'm doing, I've got to fill that space and create damage. So if you are a you know, purebred pure striker, tire, yeah. I don't like to clinch at all, you need some clinch. Yeah. You have to feel that sensitivity to get into it. Where striking, the removing of that sensitivity, that feeling of energy comes into play is it's just a little more chaotic. I have to be a little more accurate. When I'm clinching, I can grab onto clothes yeah. and slow things down, right? I can create pressure. I can maybe take them to the floor. If I can take them to the floor, we get into that. But even with that case, like if we go into, like, you know, I'm in this position, who says that especially if you expose this hip forward that I can't do classic yeah. and just knock you on your ass? Sure. Well, it's like what you were talking about earlier that you were able to pull off a hip toss against the knife because <laughs> right. you have done that a million times. Yeah. You know how to throw it. And I off. wasn't looking for it. It's it just, it's yeah. There's a massive difference there. I'm though. a big fan of the hip sweep. I do it all yeah. the time. And it's so. a great way to actually go in and attack that. I mean, theoretically speaking, even from, you know, our inside two on one, theoretically, like there you is. could use that and that would technically fall into what we would consider a lower stake down. Yeah. Because if I lose it and it doesn't happen, I'm still in front of You're still strong point. and based. Yeah. Yeah. But it's something you know, you know what I mean? Even understanding like sweeping and kicking legs out. You know what I mean? Like if you're so focused up here and I go this and then I like take this foot out from underneath you, you know? Yeah. So that's one of the things we're, we're rarely will you hear us say, and I said this today, rarely will you hear us say, don't ever do that. That'll never work. It's well against a shitty attacker and a very high level of trained person. You can do some really dumb stuff, right? If it works, it works. I mean, that's just fighting in general, but if I have zero clinch work, I am relying on timing. And the problem here is, like you were talking earlier, I can deck you in the face, and depending on your background, you might stay in the fight. I don't care who you are. If that blade touches me, it's doing damage. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's gonna slowly start to diminish me if I keep getting poked and keep getting poked and keep getting poked. So I don't want to be here. Right, you don't wanna be, we can't, we can't be smart. Yeah, and so then we take that and we look at everything else, which is, okay, if I do like, oh shit, like here, right? Perfect example, we're here. Back to the wall, I don't have a clear cut run. If I start running this way, I'm gonna run into that wall. If I start running this way, I'm gonna run into that wall. So I do have to resolve this problem. But maybe I'm using my timing and my striking yeah. to run, right, to open that entry. So to me, that's how our striker trains for dealing with the knife. And it's not clear cut, it's not a series of techniques, that's not the way it works, it's not the way we teach, period. Would you say it's a concept <laughs> of knives and control? It's a, it's a series of concepts <laughs> that may control a knife. Hypothetically speaking. Regret. Hypothetically speaking. I have to say something kind of smart because it's my channel. I haven't spoken in like 10 minutes. This is something you said, you've, you've addressed it, but you haven't said it. So I'm going to say it so I can sound smart. Everything you've done when the knife is coming in, you've done something to get yourself here, right? Yeah. It's not just a fuck, right? Which like even fighting bare knuckle or sorry, yeah. fighting in sport. I don't want to do that, right? You throw something at me, I would rather be here. Right. So the concept there that we didn't address, addresses in, in grappling, also in striking is if they're gonna throw something at you, don't be where they want you to be. Yeah. Meaning, if we're here and I can find some kind of way to go, bah, I wanna turn around, make you turn around as much as possible so that, like you said, if they're trained to know where the face is, if the face is moving, they have to work harder to hit you. Yeah. But if I'm, if I'm a pure striker, right? If I'm here, this is a, this is a numbers game. Okay. Eventually I'm gonna lose that. Something's gonna lose, yeah. So, the real way to learn all these concepts and figure out how I as a striker, you as a grappler, anybody else has whatever other useless thing they're doing, is to take a knife control concepts course, learn how to apply the concepts to whatever your martial art, your sport is, and then train rigorously. Yeah. Which that's everything, right? With anything intention. Else. Rigorously with intention. with intention. I think that's the biggest element. I because... hate 10,000 hours. Yeah. That's my least favorite expression. Yeah. Because 10,000 hours of what? Exactly. Right? Like 10,000 hours of a very specific intention. Hell yeah. 10,000 hours of I fought guys with knives for 10,000 hours. Okay, was it on the ground? Was it standing? Were you striking? Were you not striking? Were they trying to hurt you? Or yeah. were they just... Was it a shock knife? Was it a paint knife? Was it a... Yeah. Check out Knife Control Concepts. Come into a seminar near you as well as online. They have an online platform and a channel. Um, mm -hmm. His Instagram is blowing up all the time. Love it. Also, like, comment, share, subscribe, comment, self-defense. Aaron, thank you so much. Yeah, for my pleasure, man. Thank you.